Hi, I'm Carol. My friends often call me by many nicknames like Flores Princess, Party Girl, or Money Burning Machine. These names come from my wild personality and how much I'm willing to pay. I was born into a wealthy family and was spoiled rotten by my parents, from childhood to adulthood. The only thing I had to think about was how to spend my parents' money. God must have given me this life so I could learn how to enjoy it to the fullest. Please like and subscribe to listen to my story. Today, my friends and I went to a big bar in the city to celebrate my best friend, Kayla, and another friend named John. They've officially became mm -hmm. a couple. We drank a lot and most of us were drunk. I threw a credit card at the waiter and asked for payment, but his reply instantly sobered me up. Dear customer, your credit card has been declined. I was surprised because this was the first time I encountered this situation. I gave the waiter a few other cards, but none worked. At the same time, I got a call from my dad. I rushed out of the bar and got in the car to go home. I have never heard my father lose his temper like that. I got out of the car and panicked when I saw my parents sitting solemnly on the bench in front of the house. Mom? Dad? What's going on? My company is bankrupt. All accounts are frozen. We have to sell everything to pay off the debt. If it's still not enough, I might have to go to jail. Everything? Do you mean our house too? What about my stuff? My collection of perfumes, dresses, and shoes too? I only keep the essentials for you. We have sold everything else. Oh my God. Do you know how hard it takes me to get them? It's my property. You have to ask me before you do anything with them. We don't even have a house to live in, and you still worry about all that nonsense? Our family's not wealthy anymore. Look at reality, Carol. We have already arranged everything. You will be staying at my old friend's house. She has a farm in the eastern countryside. As for us, we will stay in the city to take care of the company's affairs. Farm? We such a filthy place. How about my friends and my studies? I can just leave everything here. This is something you must do. There's no other choice, Carol. The company bankruptcy is much more complicated than you think. Staying in the city may be dangerous for you. That night, my parents drove me out of the city to the east. Everything happened so fast that I didn't have time to prepare anything. In the car, I kept asking questions about my family's problems. After a while, I unconsciously fell asleep. Wake up, Carol. We're here. Ah. <sighs> Where am I? What is this place? Where's my phone? Hurry up and get your luggage, Carol. We don't have much time. Opening the door to step out of the car, I was directly hit by the bright sunlight, accompanied by an unpleasant smell and the mixed sounds of all kinds of animals. I dragged my suitcase and followed my parents to an old house nearby. God, huh? I had to stay in this damn place? Just breathing in the air here was enough to make me sick. Donna, are you home? It's me. Martha. Oh, Martha, you came sooner than I thought. Everyone, please go inside. It's been a long time since we sat together. Let's save it for another time, Donna. The thing I asked you when in my last call... Her name is Carol, right? Rest is short. I'll take care of her. Just focus on solving your problems. Carol, come and say hello to Miss Donna. You'll be staying with Donna's family for a while. You have to follow Miss Donna's words. Don't be stubborn, okay? I reluctantly approached Miss Donna and nodded. My parents gave me a few more instructions and then hurriedly left. A feeling of anxiety suddenly appeared in my mind. This was the first time living away from my parents, and it was such a bad situation. <sighs> Jack, hurry up and come here. A tall boy hurriedly ran from outside to the house. His face was sweaty and his body was still covered with animal hair. This is Carol, the girl I told you about last time. From today, Carol will be living with us. This is my son, Jack. He's the same age as you, so there's no need to be formal. Later, Jack will take you on a farm tour. And now, take Carol back to her room. Be sure to show her how to use the utensils inside. But I was shaving sheep. More than 30 sheep are waiting to be... This is more important, Jack. All right, follow me. Oh, this country boy? Why was he so upset with me? Did he think the sheep was more important than me? Even in the city, there weren't many guys who got the chance to be close with me like this. Yet, this guy was acting so nonchalant. Jack led me to an old room. Although everything was cleaned up quite neatly and cleanly, I had a feeling I could hardly sleep in this shabby room. Here's your room. The light switches are on this side, and the fan and the radio are over there. That's all. Rest for now. I'll come back to take you on the farm tour later. Hurry up and leave! You stink! Don't come back! I'm not interested in learning about this place! What's with your attitude? You're staying at my house. I 
only came here at my parents' request. I never wanted to live in this shabby place. I knew it. City girls are always like this. You can hardly do anything useful, yet you always act like you're better than everyone else. What did you say? Don't you know who you just disrespected, country boy? That jerk Jack turned to leave. I angrily reached out and slammed the door shut. All that day, I just stayed in my room, lying in bed, texting and lamenting with my friends in the city. When I talk about my father's company going bankrupt, nobody replied to me anymore. John and Kayla even blocked my account. Those they immediately changed when they found out I was in trouble. Huh. I regretted helping them before. It was dark. The noise of the animals outside had gradually disappeared. The air had become more comfortable, and I was beginning to feel hungry. I haven't eaten anything since morning, so it was expected. Miss Donna was so strange. She told my parents she would take good care of me, but didn't even give me appetizers. I opened the door to go outside and went to the kitchen. The smell of apple pie still wafted in the air, making my stomach growl. I started looking for food everywhere and found a hot tray of apple pie in the oven. I devoured it with my hand without a second thought. Oh, so the city girl is hungry too? This shabby place has no food for you. I stood dumbfounded, my face flushed with embarrassment and my throat constricted. I lowered my face and hurriedly ran to my room. That night, I struggled to sleep, partly because of the uncomfortable bed, partly because of hunger, and then being insulted by the other Jack. My status has truly changed. The following morning, when it was still dark, I was awakened by the noise of the animals. When I went out, Miss Donna and Jack had been standing in front of the house ever since, as if they had purposely stood there to wait for me. So you can get up early too, huh? Who can sleep in such a noisy place? Have some, Carol. Jack will take you to farm tour later, okay? If you want to stop being hungry, follow me. Lazy people can't live on this farm. Jack picked up a rake and turned to leave. I took the cookie bag from Miss Donna and reluctantly followed. This place turned out to be a family farm. It might not seem spacious, but it had many types of animals and plants. The farm was also clearly subdivided and cleaned up quite nicely. While I'm showing you around, I'll guide you to work, so pay attention. Mm, go ahead. I will see if I like the work or not. I followed Jack into the chicken house. The foul smell that hit my nose made me want to run immediately. However, I lingered because I was quite curious when mm -hmm. I watched Jack pour chicken feet into small troughs. As he waited for the chicken to gather to eat, Jack would take the basket and walk around the coop to pick up eggs that fell on the ground. I covered my nose and went to ask Jack about it. He told me the hens would lay eggs every night. The eggs that fall on the ground can easily get broken by the chickens themselves. If I wanted to pick the eggs, I needed to distract the chickens with food. So, they gathered elsewhere first. I also went in to collect eggs with Jack. It was the first time I held freshly laid eggs in my hands. They were still even warm. <laughs> After that, Jack opened the cage's door so the chickens could go out into a small garden to bask in the sun. They scattered, causing dust to fly everywhere. <coughs> it's so dusty. Why don't you just lock them in here? I need to clean the chicken coop. Besides keeping them in captivity all day will stress the chickens. They won't give as many eggs anymore, and the quality of the eggs will also decrease. <laughs> Did you come up with all this nonsense yourself? What do these chicken know? Didn't they teach you biology in high school? A chicken is a species that also knows sadness and suffering. Their development is not only based on their health condition, but also influenced by their mood. Chickens can also communicate with each other through 24 different types of sounds, unlike someone who can only say harsh words and act arrogant all the time. Hey, if you talk like that again, I'll leave. The chickens suddenly jump on my head and shoulder. I panic and wave my hands, shouting and holding my head, running away. I bump into Jack, causing him to fall to the ground. The egg basket in his hand also fell and broke. Jack jumped up and looked at the broken egg basket, shouting angrily. Can you do anything useful? How can I get chicken eggs to deliver to customers today? It, it's because of the chickens. They scare me. You better go. Don't stay here and ruin my work. I don't understand why mom keeps forcing me to bring you along. All you do is cause trouble. I gritted my teeth and angrily looked at Jack. My throat constricted and my tears swelled up. I wiped my tears with my head and went straight out. It was the first time in my life that I had to hear such harsh words. I sat down and cried next to the grass. A moment later, the sound of horses' footsteps came rushing towards where I was sitting. It was Jack. He was riding a large horse, giving me a wry smile and scratching his head. Back then, I was a bit harsh. Sorry. 
I ignored him, stood up, and was about to turn my back to leave a jack, jumped down, and grabbed my hand. I was about to slap Jack when the big black horse suddenly approached me, pushed me back with his nose, and continuously huffed. Jack quickly grabbed the horse's head, stroking it non-stop. <laughs> Let me introduce you. This is Flash, my brother and the reigning champion of this town's horse racing. So what? There isn't anything good when it comes to you. Oh, don't you think he stands out from the other horses? The color, the muscles, and the charisma? Horses are horses, not unicorns. Every horse is the same. Well, you can think whatever you like. Now, let's ride Flash to see the farm. Besides me, you're the first person to climb on Flash's back. Consider this my apology to you for what happened earlier. We could ride Flash to see the farm, then go home for lunch. It sounded okay, so I reluctantly nodded. But first, I had to go and pet that black horse Flash. Jack said I made him angry just now, and horses had a great memory. They were also vindictive, so they wouldn't allow people they hate to climb on their backs. After about 10 minutes, Flash agreed to let me climb on its back. Hold on to me and relax your body, moving up and down with Flash's footsteps. If you stay stiff like that, your back will hurt. On the way, Jack showed me the sheep stable, the dairy barn next to the large meadow, and the tulip hill and bloom next to it, followed by the green cornfield at the newly ripened strawberry garden. The scene was peaceful and fresh, <laughs> making my frustrations gradually disappear. Life in the countryside was indeed inconvenient and extremely hard, but it was also fascinating. It has only been half a day, but I have learned a lot of new things. At noon, Jack and I returned home. The delicious smell of food wafted from the small kitchen. Miss Donna had hey. finished preparing lunch and was waiting for us to return. <laughs> After the delicious lunch, I returned to my room to rest. Miss Donna brought me a couple of homemade yogurt jars. You must be wondering why I haven't paid attention to you since yesterday, right? Your city <laughs> life is so different than it is now. However, you have to adapt to everything here quickly. And I want you to take the initiative to do so. Your parents let you live here with us, and they have no plan to make this a vacation trip. Remember, they are facing a lot of difficulties out there. There's no time for you to play around anymore. I trust you will understand what I am saying. Eat and rest, Carol. That afternoon, I was tired, so I couldn't continue to go with Jack. I lay in my room thinking about my family's current situation, what Miss Donna just said, and my future as well. This reality was hard to accept, but what choice did I have other than facing it by myself? Over the next few months, I gradually adjusted to life on the farm with Donna and Jack. Miss Donna treated me very well, always kindly and gently taught me everything. She was like my mother and like my teacher. And Jack was the opposite of Miss Donna. He also helped and taught me many new things, but he did so very grumpily and always found a way to poke fun at me any time. Every day, everyone and I went through the same routine. We woke up early to feed animals, rode horses in the afternoon, or drove the rickshaw to planting area to care for and harvest products. Here, hard work would always go hand in hand with joy. The smiles never seemed to disappear in the farmers' faces. Watching them work every day, I knew that earning money wasn't easy at all. I never realized this fact until now. All I did was burn money on useless things. What's for dinner tonight, Miss Donna? I'm hungry. Grilled ribs, chicken waffles, and a cob salad. God, you should shower first, Carol. You still have dirt in your face. There's no need, Mom. Carol learned from those cows. She has to eat until she's full before she can shower. Shut up, Jack. I'm just too hungry. I had to water the whole strawberry garden today. It's been hard on you, Carol. It's okay. And lately, have you heard any news from my parents in the city? I haven't been able to contact them for a month. Ah, I think your parents are fine. They are probably very busy now, so don't worry too much. That's right. I just remembered some strangers drove up to our farm and looked in with binoculars in the last four or five days. When I approached, they quickly got in the car and left. I know. They came to ask to buy this farm, but I refused. Somehow, they still won't leave. Be wary, Jack. Okay, Mom. I'll walk the dogs and look for anything unusual. I didn't understand much, but I also felt quite worried. That night, I was startled awake by the fierce barking of the dogs. Going outside, I saw the bright light of the flashlight in the strawberry garden and heard Jack's oh angry God. shouting. Damn it! Those bastards must have done this! Do they think this will force us to sell the farm? Calm down, Jack! I'll report to the police in the morning so they can investigate. They'll already be on the way when the morning comes. I have to chase after them now! I ran to see that the ripe red strawberry garden had been crushed by someone's car. Jock it angry, grabbed a sh climbed the car and quickly left. Stop, Jack! It's too dangerous! Carol, you need to stop Jack! I ran to the stables and opened the door for Flash, climbing on his back to chase after Jack. 
After a while, Jack's car slowed down and stopped in front of the roadside hmm. pub that still had lights on. Jack brought his gun in. I panicked and spurred my horse. As I got closer, I heard noises of a fight from the inside, then a gunshot rang out. Flash got startled and threw me down on the road, running away. I struggled to get up and saw Jack being pulled out by a group of tall people from the pub and pushed into the car. Stop! What are you guys doing to Jack? Stop now! <laughs> One of the guys spotted me. He covered my mouth and pulled me to the car. I was still in pain after my fall, so I couldn't fight back. Jack and I were taken away. As the morning came, I found myself and Jack tied and gagged, locked in an abandoned warehouse. Looking back at Jack, I thank God he was just fainting and had no fatal injuries in his body. When Jack woke up from his coma, some tall guys came over and peeled the tape off our mouths. Help! Is anyone there? Save us! The scoundrels looked at each other and smiled. What a loud voice. But it's useless. There's no one in five kilometers around here. Instead of screaming, it's better to pray silently, you brat. Who are you guys? Why did it take us? Carol, no, <clears throat> no need to say much to them. These bastards are the ones who wanted to buy our farm but were refused. So they use this trick. So you guys are the ones who ruined my strawberry garden? Do you know how hard I've been working on it for the past four months? If your mother had agreed to our proposal that day, things would have been different. But she seems very attached to that shabby farm. Stupid. My family's lived there for a century. What right do you have to ask us to leave? I don't want to waste more time with you. That land's important to our business. Now I'll release you to complete the handover process of the farm. And this girl will stay here. <gasps> Never! You guys let her go and do whatever you want with me. No negotiation. I'll give you three hours. Even ten minutes late, I'll strip one thing off this girl. And then we'll... <laughs> well, you don't want to imagine what we'll do. If you report this to the police, prepare to receive her corpse. Now go! Jack, look at me nervously. I also panic, not knowing what to do next. What are you waiting for? Take this girl's shirt off for me. Two guys approached and pulled me up. I struggled to get out while Jack screamed and cursed. The warehouse door suddenly burst open and the police rushed in, surrounding me, causing the scoundrels to let go of me quickly. I haven't raised my voice to Carol even once in 19 years. How dare you put your hands on her and insult her? Police! How did the police get here? You! You're Mr. Flores! The owner of the famous technology company, LDA? That's right. And the girl you're trying to mess with is my only daughter. One of the people I love the most. When the thugs heard that, they collapsed in despair, obediently letting the police take them away. Jack and I were then taken to the hospital by my father. Jack was slightly injured, and I only had a few scratches from a horse fall. Fortunately, Flash ran home in time. Thanks to that, Miss Donna knew we were in danger and informed my father to come and rescue in time. Dad also told me all the secrets my parents and Miss Donna had kept from me all this time. It turned out that my parents pretended to be bankrupt. Then, let me go to the countryside to help me move away from the hustling lifestyle in the city. They want me to learn to appreciate labor and find the real value of life. Sorry for what has happened, Carol. We just want the best for you. It wasn't even been half a year, and you've changed a lot. After you get discharged from the hospital, we will take you back in the city. What? Are you leaving now, Carol? What's wrong? Will you miss me? No, I won't miss you. It's just... I'll have to do the farm work alone. I'm getting tired just thinking about it. <laughs> You're not good at lying, Jack. I want to stay here. I feel more suited to a peaceful life here. And it looks like I've become a real farmer. My parents were surprised but then smiled and nodded in agreement with my decision. Jack was overjoyed, smiling all day long. I was sure Miss Donna would be happy to see me stay too. I have to plant a new strawberry garden in the following months. The corn harvest was coming soon. Jack also promised to teach me how to shave sheep. And I haven't learned how to make strawberry cakes from Miss Donna yet. There were so many fascinating things waiting for me. How could I leave this place? Forget nicknames like Money Machine or Party Girl. From now on, call me Carol the Farmer, because I love this name.